Imagine if you had been told something that would impact your eternal soul. The person who told you this vital information had assumed that you already knew the essential background of the knowledge that was given to you, but you did not. Because of that wrong assumption, all your efforts to put that plan into action have been blocked ever since then. That is what it is like if you are reading the New Testament without your Hebrew roots. Messiah Yeshua was born a Jew. He lived as a Jew. He ministered as a Jew to Jews. His teachings cannot be fully understood without their Hebrew root connection. Messiah Yeshua quoted the Tanakh, the Old Testament, nearly 400 times. We are going to journey through the scriptures together to obtain the essential background of those 400 quotes that Messiah Yeshua spoke. Here's the message that he sent to the sons of Israel, El, announcing Shalom through Yeshua the Messiah, who is the Lord of everything. Amen? So here, this is after the, you know, the thing where Peter does not eat the food. Okay? Then he leaves. It's a separate account because he passed the test because he was asked three times to eat the food. He denied the Lord three times. Okay? Before the cock crowed, you know, before he denied him three times. During this time, during Hagmatzah, he denied him. Okay? And then when Yeshua came back, he said, do you love me? He did it three times, and he didn't eat the food. But now Kepha is saying, it doesn't matter who, you're, who you are, whether a Jew or a Gentile, as long as you fear Jehovah and follow Yeshua's example and do what's right and acceptable to him. Now you understand from Baikra, from Leviticus, that what is acceptable, you have to find out there what is acceptable, okay? So here Kepha is pointing it out, but the church goes off on this whole la-di-da trail of silliness because they don't know what's acceptable to the Lord. It's that simple because you're 2,000 years away from being grafted in to the Hebrew olive tree. So you're offering up what is not acceptable to him. Like Good Friday. They're saying, well, this is a time Messiah rode into Jerusalem. No, that was Thursday. Because the Passover was Monday night. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Three days. Uh, get it right. If you're going to make a new, new holy day, well, do it right. Or do the Bikarim, the right day. Okay? Do what's acceptable. Okay? Let's go back to Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Verse 6 through 8. Leviticus 19, verses 6 through 8. Leviticus 19, verse 6 through 8. It is to be eaten the same day you offer it, and the following day, but if any of it remains until the third day, it is burned up completely. If any of it is eaten on the third day, it will be, have become a disgusting thing and will not be accepted. Moreover, and everyone who eats it will bear the consequences of profaning something holy meant for Jehovah. That person will be cut off from his people. Okay, this is about the offering. After the third day, you don't want to eat it anymore. One, it's not going to be good, especially back then. There was no refrigeration. Okay, things would be smoked, which makes it last longer. But after a while, it does go bad. So Jehovah's saying, I don't want my priests getting sick. So after the third day, burn it up completely. But if you eat it, okay, something that is meant for Jehovah, if you eat it, you're going to be cut off. Now what does cut off from his people mean? That means kicked out. Okay? That means no longer being able to bring your offering to Jehovah because you're no longer part of the people because you've been cut off. Now what is even cut off further when it comes to your eternity? If you're offering something that is not acceptable to the Lord, as we get further into this chapter, if you're offering something that's not acceptable, you are going to be cut off. Okay? You may not feel it as much here, but when you meet the Jewish Messiah, face to face, and you're doing something that is inappropriate, then 
you will not be able to get into his house. You'll be cut off from his people, those going into heaven. And then if you're not in heaven, where are you going to be? Sheol. Now take that understanding and turn to the book of Romans. We're going to be focusing on cut off. Romans chapter 11. Romans 11, verse 22. Romans 11, verse 22. Cutting off. Cutting off. Romans 11, verse 22. Romans 11, verse 22. So take a good look towards God's kindness and His severity. On one hand, severity toward those who fell off. But on the other hand, God's kindness towards you. Provided you maintain yourself in that kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. You too will be cut off. Okay? So, well, what does the rabbi from Tarsus, Paul, the emissary, what is he talking about? Oh, he's talking about Leviticus. That if you don't do what's acceptable to the Lord, then you're going to be cut off. Okay? He's going to be kind to you while you learn, but once you learn, after you get off the milk and you're supposed to be on the meat, then you want to keep doing what you want to do and offer to Jehovah what you want to offer, not what he wants. You're going to be cut off, just like the people of Israel were cut off because they wanted to offer up to him what they wanted, except he wanted what he wanted. Sort of like offering me a plate of broccoli or cauliflower. It's not going to get eaten. It's going to get tossed in the trash. Okay? So here, Jehovah is not going to accept unclean things. Here, shrimp, Lord. You know, lobster, Lord. Uh, clams, Lord. Oh, they all taste great. And to the Lord, he said, no, we're not going to have any of that in my house. Okay? Now, let's go back to Leviticus, Viacra 19, verse 9 and 10. We're cooking right along here. I don't know if we're going to get through the whole chapter. Leviticus 19, verse 9 and 10. Leviticus 19, verse 9 and 10. When you harvest the ripe crops produced in your land, don't harvest all the way to the corners of your field, and don't gather all the ears of grain left by the harvesters. Likewise, don't gather the grapes left on the vine or fallen on the ground after harvest. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am your Hovah Elohim. Amen. This is what God's welfare system was. What we have in this world, and especially in America today, is abhorrent to God. There was a report um, that came out this week that 86 million people are sustaining 168 million people. There are 168 million people on Obama bucks. That's not going to happen. It's not going to be sustainable either. The Lord doesn't want that either. He says, leave the corners of your field and the stuff that falls to the ground for the poor and the foreigner. Everybody's supposed to work. The Remnants Call is a part of Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation in Fairview, New Jersey, USA. Beth Goyim is located right outside of New York City. Beth Goyim is a congregation where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua the Messiah as one people. Following the Route 66 Kings Highway, Genesis to Revelation, the only perfect word of Adonai. For more information on this end time ministry and how you can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God, call 973-338-7800. That's 973-338-7800. Or check out our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H. G-O-Y-I-M dot O-R-G or houseofthenations.org Be with us live on the Lord's Day Shabbat Saturday 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the sounding of the shofar and the word of God in English and Spanish. You can also be with us live Tuesday evening at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Messianic Torah Time Bible Study. It's all free. Just click the on-air button. It is that simple. Remember, BethGoim.org or HouseOfTheNations.org. 
973-338-7800. 973-338-7800.